Okay, great. Um, hello and welcome to the second of our Creative Climate Tools user webinars. Um, my name is Caroline. I'm a project manager at Julie's Bicycle. My pronouns are she and her. I have long brown hair, which is currently tied up. I'm wearing glasses, a grey jumper, and there is a plant in the background behind me. Shortly, I will be handing over to my colleague, Lucas, who will be running through the tools demo. And we also have Richard and Luby online with us to help facilitate our Q&A session and provide all important uh, technical support. So first, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, the session is being recorded and it will be uploaded to our website. We won't be enabling microphones, um, but on the screen now is a link and a QR code, which will give you access to Slido, whereby you can ask questions throughout the session. We've also enabled the Q&A function in Zoom, although please do try and use Slido in the first instance, if possible. We are hoping that most of your questions will be answered throughout the demo, but do use either of these functions for anything further you'd like answered. As there are, what are we at? We're at 124, 130 participants. Um, we're, we're actually expecting around 200 in total. Um, so it may be that we don't get to all of the questions, but after the session, ooh, excuse me, after the session, we will be recording and um, we'll, sorry, we'll upload the recording and address anything that we haven't managed to get to. After the session, we'll, sorry, after the demonstration, we'll take a short comfort break and return for the Q&A session. We hope to wrap things up by about three o'clock, um, but we are going to play things a little bit by ear on timings. It's just going to depend on how many questions we actually have and manage to get through. So uh, on to our agenda. We'll begin with a brief introduction to the partnership between Julie's Bicycle and Arts Council England programme. We'll then touch briefly on what is coming up in the 23, 2023 to 2026 programme. I have to get that bit right. Uh, then we'll look specifically at NPO reporting for the rollover year of 22-23. We'll provide a brief overview of the current updates and the planned work on the Creative Climate Tools, formerly the Creative Green Tools. I will then pass on to my colleague Lucas, who will take you through the tools, whereby hopefully most of your questions are going to be answered. We'll have a, a ten or short, short break at that point, mainly to give myself and Lucas uh, a rest. Um, and finally, we'll hold a Q&A session in which we aim to address any additional questions and perhaps clarify anything that we've already answered in Slido. So, Judy's Bicycle is a not-for-profit organisation with 16 years experience supporting the creative and cultural sector to take direct action on climate change and environmental sustainability. Working at this section of sorry, at this intersection of sustainability and arts and creative industries, JB offers events, expert resources, carbon tracking tools, training and consultancy to equip organisations with the knowledge and confidence to speak out and together on this issue. You can find out more about our work on our website. Judy's Bicycle works in partnership with Arts Council England to deliver the environmental programme for national portfolio organisations and the wider cultural sector. So welcome back to anyone from the portfolio from the 2018 to 2022 stroke 23 portfolio and hello to any of the new starters from the last year within this cohort. For those that don't know, the programme was extended by one year to accommodate the challenge that we faced during COVID. We were meant to finish in 2022. This is our rollover and final year of 23. And welcome to anyone joining us as part of the new 2023 to 2026 portfolio. While you may not be ready to report, this webinar will provide you with lots of really useful information when, it, when, you, do, uh, when you are ready to come and use the tools. Right, we have a quick poll uh, that Luby will launch now um, in which if you could just indicate to us which program, sorry, which portfolio you are in, and if you've used the tools before. Luby, if you could, great, if you could put that up there now. Thank you very much. Lovely, I can see lots of responses. That's great, thank you very much. Um, so the Arts Council England Environmental Programme is one of the larger 
projects that we work on in partnership with Arts Council England. And this webinar is a specific output from this programme. JB has partnered with ACE to deliver this programme since 2012, and we are very happy to be continuing that partnership into the 23-26 programme, helping funded organisations report on annual environmental impacts, supporting arts organisations to take action. The programme includes free resources, briefings, help desk support, events and webinars, all aimed at increasing environmental literacy within the sector. You can find more information in our last year's annual report, which is on screen now, with case studies from all types and sizes of organisations. Here we can see a couple of the other recent publications that are also direct outputs of the programme, including the energy briefing and the finance briefing. These and lots and lots and lots of other free resources are all available from our website. And you can also sign up to our newsletter, which the link is on the slide now. So why use the tools? Well, the answer is there is power in collective reporting. Here are just a few of the stats from last year's annual report. 92% uh, of MPOs include environmental sustainability in their core business strategies. 76% use environmental impact data and carbon footprint to inform their planning and actions. From your collective efforts in reporting, an overall picture can be created of where the sector is with its carbon emissions. This donut, don't, donut, this donut diagram on the right, for example, vitally tells us where the biggest impact areas are and therefore provides information on where the support is needed to help the sector decarbonize. Collective reporting works. So what have we got coming up um, in the new environmental program for 23-26? It will be packed with content and resources. There are four leadership strands, Board Environmental Champions, Creative Climate Leadership Lab, Transforming Energy and Leading Resilience. Additional support is provided to the portfolio and the sector as a whole through the carbon tools and a wide range of other resources. The tools, webinars, policy updates and briefings, case studies and peer sharing discussion, all of which will be freely available in the resource and hub on our website. Uh, so just for a moment, I will be speaking directly to those of you reporting for the 2022-2023 rollover year. As with previous years, there are a few things that you need to do. You need to upload an up-to-date environmental policy and action plan to the Creative Climate Tools. You then need to enter your environmental data into the tools covering the financial year April 2022 to March 2023. If you need any clarification on those requirements, please refer to your ACE funding agreement or speak with your relationship manager. And finally, complete the MPO survey. This is a really valuable tool for us to assess the quality of the program. And by completing the, the uh, survey, you enter yourself into a prize draw too. Now, this, the deadline is Friday the 30th of June. This is an important one because in previous years, we have granted extensions. However, because of the overlap of cohorts this year, we cannot grant extensions. So please take note. I should add, if you ask, if you do have any questions that you need to ask and you leave it until Friday the 30th to ask those questions, it is very, very possible that there will be a delay in us responding. We are a small team, so we strongly suggest not leaving it till the last minute. Judas Bicycle uh, received some funding from ACE to update the Creative Green tools. Much work has been taking place in the background. And for those of you familiar with the tools, you will notice the updated branding. And of course, the name has gone live now. We are officially the Creative Climate Tools. There is some new functionality that has also already been made live, such as homeworking, updated travel functionality, and custom emissions. However, generally speaking, currently the tools do work very much as they did during last year's reporting. Once this reporting period is over, there will be some further exciting updates made to the tools, all of which will be communicated through our newsletter. So do make sure you're signed up to stay updated. There will also be further demonstration opportunities later in the year to uh, explain some of the new functionality. So keep an eye out for further information on those too. So uh, a few key tech points related to the tools from our digital lead. 
please use updated browser software and where possible use the latest version of Chrome. The tool does work on mobile and tablet, but if you've got a lot of data to input, we strongly suggest using a laptop or desktop. Make sure your operating system and antivirus software is all up to date and save your data regularly. No need to submit until you're ready, but do save it. We do regular system backups. However, we cannot guarantee individual user data recovery. So please, once you've submitted your annual report, download it so that you have your own record safely stored. Um, Julie's Bicycle Support, um, we are here to help you. And during, well, the reporting period, which was May and, and June, we have a dedicated email help desk, uh, support at juliesbicycle.com. On Thursdays throughout the rest of June, we also have a telephone line available, <coughs> excuse me, for between 9.30 and 5. Although I have realized if anyone was phoning today, they might not get an answer in the next hour or two. Um, but so we do generally speak, speak speaking, we do recommend using the support at juliesbicycle.com route in the first instance. Oh, I've gone back. Here we go. Uh, Userback is a new function which allows us allows users to send screenshots, screen recordings to report technical issues within the tools. Click the feedback tab on the bottom right of the screen to open the menu. Use the report a bug function to give us details with options to send videos and annotated screenshots. I should stress though this is for technical issues rather than help with your data input. For data input issues, please refer back to the support at Julie's Bicycle email address. So a quick recap, things to remember. The deadline for MPO reporting data 2022 to 2023 data is Friday the 30th of June. Your data should refer to the period April 22 to March 23. And if you need any further clarification on the requirements, please refer to your ACE funding agreement or speak with your relationship manager. Upload your policy and action plan to the documents page of the Creative Climate Tools and please complete the MPO survey to enter yourself into the prize draw. And finally, there will be no extensions granted. 30th of June is the cutoff. So I will now hand over to Lucas, who is going to demonstrate how to use the tools. Lucas, thank you. Cool. Thank you, Kaz. Just going to share my screen now. Okay, does that look okay to everyone? Cool. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Lucas. Uh, my pronouns are they slash he. I have sort of quite long, wavy, blonde and brown hair. I'm wearing a purple t-shirt and I have a blue background with some pictures and a calendar hung behind me. Uh, so for this session, I'm going to be kind of talking through some basic parts of the Creative Climate tools. So I'm going to go through how to create an account, uh, key navigation points, creating different types of reports, and also looking at your results. So for those of you that are familiar with the tools, you'll probably notice a few differences that should make your user experience a bit better. This demonstration will be quite in depth, so I just want to reiterate that this session is being recorded, so you'll be able to go back and rewatch the recording if you miss anything, because it will be on our website. Okay, cool. Let's get started. So first of all, you'll see the sign up page when you go onto the website. Um, so for new users, that will be the, the first thing that you see. Um, this form you know, you have to include your organization name, your country, area, size of your organization. So it goes from individual to over 250, uh, the sector that you're in. And then you can also choose to be reporting either by calendar or financial year. Um, this is also an important area that you can click if you're Arts Council funded. And then you can also click which funding portfolio you're from. So you can select as many of these as you like um and then finally for this you have to enter your just a few contact details like your name and email address and uh, just so you know you can go back in and edit this at any time so it's no problem okay so this is the data page 
it's the most important page on the platform, which is why that's where you start off with. Um, so this is where you'll be going to create and look at your reports and entering your data. So this is the results page. So it loads. It can take a minute. <laughs> Yeah, this is the results page. So this is where you'll find all of the data that you've entered and submitted, and you can look back on different years and everything as well. So that's really useful to get a sort of clear idea of where where your main emissions are coming from. Um, and then, so the home page, which is one won't take as long. Yeah, so this is a general sort of dashboard of the most recent information on your account. Uh, but we'll come back to these pages pretty soon uh, after the demo. Um, this is the organization details page in the top right corner. Um, so that's where you can sort of, you know, change your organization name. You can also see your users and add and delete them if you need to. Uh, change your funding details as well, which might be quite important for people who are returning because we're going to have some We've had some new functions, which mean that you are going to have to change some details if you're coming back. Uh, this is where you can add new users. You just put in an email address here and then click add, and then they should receive an invitation to be added to the organization. And if you like, you can also delete the organization with some nice severe warnings to make sure that <laughs> you're not making a mistake. Um, OK, and then we have the resources page. Um, and that is where you'll find several different resources, user guides, and also a data template for sort of, which just sort of shows everything that you need for, um, that, that that's in forms basically. So in case you need to have a look in advance before, without creating a footprint, it's a little bit easier to see everything set out in front of you. There's also a video demonstration here, which is quite similar to, to what I'm doing now. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the data page now. So there's six different types of reports that you can choose from, which are essentially in the category of either buildings or projects. So if you're a building, you can either select an office footprint or a venue or cultural building footprint. So venue or cultural building might be theater, museum, gallery, cinema, any kind of public space venue and an office is more of a closed environment of an office building or a space that you run when, as an organization. On the other side, we have projects. Here you can create different reports related to the activity of your organization. There's four different report options here. So there's outdoor events, indoor events, tours, and productions. Users are encouraged to create as many or as few of these reports as is relevant to their organization. We typically, re typically recommend that organizations choose one building report or for their day-to-day -day operations. Um, and then we would recommend complementing this with project footprints if that applies to you. And of course, this is just a recommendation. Uh, everyone, you know, we know that you're all very different. There's several hundred of you, so you're all going to have your own nuances. So we, we try to kind of complement that with different options for you. Okay, so I'm going to run through an example now of opening a venue slash cultural building. So to do that, you go onto the data page, which I'm on now, and at the bottom you click new building. And then in this drop down here, you'll see venue slash cultural building. You have to type in a name, so I'm just going to type in venue A. And you also will need to select a sector. So I'll just click archives. This won't make a difference to your calculation, it's just for, for our data's purpose. And you click save, and then you'll find that this has been added now. So it's been added to your footprints, and you can start inputting data. So, sorry, one sec. So, yeah, we have the general tab here, which kind of gives you options to input some basic data about your building. So 
the country and the region of the country that you operate from, um, the type of building, the floor space of the building, which is quite important if you need to input, if, if you want to do some benchmarking. Um, also the number of employees in the building. And then here you need to put in the total known attendance for the building if you have that information, um, number of spaces as well. And then, so you have an energy tab for anything relating to electricity, gas, heating, um, water, waste, and audience travel, business travel, fleet travel. So the difference between business travel and fleet travel is business travel is essentially any travel relating to business, if that makes sense. So it doesn't include commuting, but it's so, so if you have, um, if you have a get the get a cab to a conference or something, that would be where you put this in. And then fleet travel is specifically travel involving any any vehicle that are owned by the organization. And then at the end, we also have this beyond carbon survey, which I'll talk a bit more about later. So okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of data. So I'm gonna say the year is 2022 to 23. Gonna put England, London. Uh, we'd also recommend that you keep this tick box checked here, just so because it will ensure that the emissions from your footprint are included in the results tab here. If you untick this, then they won't be included, which could be useful for if you're doing testing. But if you want it to be included in your reports, then I would keep that. Um, so, Yes, yeah, so in the total known attendance, I'm going to put in 30,000. And then I'm going to add some spaces as well. So I'm going to put that I have two spaces. And then they'll automatically make two spaces for you. So I'll put space A, space B. Uh, capacity will be 1,000 for this one. 20 performances and 500 for this one and 25. Okay. And then I'm going to go into the energy field. Okay. So this is the energy tab. The main areas of energy data for most buildings will be things like electricity use or mains gas use. The idea is that you are entering the consumption figures for the period that you're reporting on. So for building footprint reports, this will be over an entire year. So for example, how much electricity did the main venue use when over the last 12 months? So these figures can be found on your basic utility bills or by taking a manual meter reading. Uh, the units for these figures would typically be found in kilowatt hours, which is the main one we use as well, apart from in gas, where we can include meters cubed and gigajoules yeah um so yeah these are there are also a few different options for things related to generators so we have options like diesel or biodiesel particularly for events and some outside spaces um a good tip would also be that some of these fields have a small red icon so if you hover over these like this you'll get a little bit more details about what kind of thing you need to enter um yeah I think most of them have this. So yeah, if you're ever a little bit confused, this might give you a little bit more information. Um, we also have added this year, we've added home working hours. So anyone who's reported before won't have seen this before. Um, and it's essentially, if you have any people, any staff members working from home, you can put in the total number of hours across the entire year that they have worked from home. Um, and obviously, a lot of people might not have an exact number on that so some kind of estimate might be good just by maybe adding up their contracted hours and the average number of hours they would do every week or something um, and then for home heating it would be we would normally recommend about 50 percent of the um, home working hours using office equipment because that roughly equates to how much of the year you would have home heating on but Again, that's up to your discretion and you can make your own estimates based on that. Um, you can also, we've also got another new feature here for custom emissions, which we have in 
most tabs. Um, and that's essentially if you've calculated your own carbon footprint somewhere else for a, a specific impact area, especially something that maybe these tools don't cover, you can put them in here. So I could put in 1,000 here and that will automatically add 1,000 kilograms uh, to my footprint, which you can already see here. Um, okay, where am I? Oh yeah, I should also add that there's a notes section here. So if you, you know, if you want to give more details about your footprint or anything like that, then you could give that here. And then also that might help us to understand your footprint a bit better. And while we're running a quality check, we will look at that and see as well. Okay. So I will press save and update, which is a very important button. If you don't remember to press that, then it might, so there's a good chance that your data will be lost. So very important to remember that. So let's go on to the water tab now. So this is where you can enter the consumption figures for your building over the last 12 months. Um, water and wastewater data is basic information that should be readily available in your utility bills or via water meters if you have metering available. Um, and these will normally be found in meters cubed. Um, as mentioned already, we also have custom emissions here for this. Um, moving on to the waste tab, uh, this is sort of split between different waste streams. So whether waste is going to landfill, energy, as in incineration of your waste, uh, recycling or composting. Uh, there's a few different unit options that can be used to measure your waste. So one option is simply entering the number of tons here. Um, and then, so that's maybe if you have a contractor who will give you a, a basic tonnage report, um, but you can also do number of, if you have regular skip collections here or regular wheeled bin collections, so this would be the number per month of this that you get. So not the total number of wheeled bins across the year, but the number every month. So if you have one 500 litre bin a month, you just put the number one here. Um, and then we also have just individual one-off skips as well. So if you had a big clear out or something like that, and you only have a one-off moment, then you can then you can use it for that, and that will only calculate it as one. Okay. So I'm going to say that we have five of these monthly wheel bin collections. And that's been added here. So that's calculated our landfill for us already. And I'm going to click save. Okay. Moving on to audience travel. So this page is set out in a way that you would typically survey an audience for their travel information. Uh, the idea is that you have a list of different transport types and you'll enter a percentage of your audience that are traveling by a certain method. So for example, if you've done a survey of your events or venue, you might know that 80% of your audience is traveling by car and the rest is traveling by train. So let's put that. So car travel here, it's a little slider here, or you can type it in. So 20% train. And then you'll also need to enter the average return distance. So I'm going to say uh, 30 kilometers for car and 70 kilometers for train. And also for car, you need to put the average car occupancy because then that will help to divide the total audience number with this. And yeah, that's a good thing to know actually. And um, you will have for this to be able to work, you will need to put in the total known attendance in the general tab, which I've done, which I said it was 30,000. So I'll click save results for that. And that's given a breakdown here now as well. Okay. So to collect this kind of information, we'd recommend conducting an audience travel survey. 
this can be done at the point of sale or at the box office on ticket collection. Or you could even send out a questionnaire to your members to find out how, how they typically travel to your venue. Uh, for anyone who's not able to obtain this kind of information, there is also a default option. So if you click this box here at the top, that will essentially give you a delete this data. Okay, yeah, so if you click the use defaults button, we've kind of calculated our, our own sort of averages based on the sort of sector and the location of your venue. So essentially you're using our, our own kind of rough averages here as an estimate of what your audience travel might be. Obviously this is not going to be as accurate as your own data that you collect, but obviously it, it can be quite difficult to collect this kind of data for a lot of people. So we kind of wanted to be able to give people an idea of like a ballpark figure of, of this audience travel data. Okay. So going on to business travel. So for those of you who have used the tools before, you can see that the layout of this tab has changed a little bit. However, the way in which you can enter data is more or less the same. Uh, business travel refers to any non-commuter work travel, as I said. Um, this is the sort of travel information that you would should be readily available on record, or you can probably obtain it from your travel partner. Um, so you can have flights here up at the top, so you can click add flight. The pop-up that comes up and you can sort of decide if you if you click manual you can just type in the number of kilometers so say i did a 200 kilometer domestic flight but also you can click automatic and just type in the two cities that you went from so i'll say went from london to uh, sydney And you can click if it was a return journey or not as well. And then you also need to put in the number of passengers traveling. So there's different different types of um, ticket. So there's just one passenger. And then if I click save, it'll come up with that here. It's calculating the results now. Save. Uh, yeah. So for any other travel you can sort of select the mode of transport using the travel type drop down here. So we've got bus, car, ferry, minibus, motorbike, people carrier, taxi, train, tram, and tube. Um, and then you, within those as well, you can select the different vehicle types. So the type of fuel they run off normally. Oh, there we go. My flight's come. Okay. So we've got five tons here for the long haul flight. Um, okay. So. And then you can also measure it either by the distance traveled or the total fuel used. So that would change the units to liters and back to kilometers. And for certain ones like bus, you'll also need to input the number of people. And that's just because the, the conversion factors that we use are slightly different for these. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do a car footprint. And I'm gonna say that it's a diesel car and that I traveled 100 kilometers. Okay, and then I'm also gonna add a train journey. And it's a national train and I traveled 260 kilometers and there were 10 people. So just a quick navigation point, as you may have noticed, we're going through this tab. 
uh, you are able to add and remove lines using these. So if you need to enter more data, essentially you can click this plus. And then also if you have too many, you can click the minus next to any of them as well. Um, and then we can also type in number of nights in hotel accommodation. So this is quite a quite a basic calculation. So it's essentially just if you just type in the rough number of of nights that your staff have spent in hotel accommodation. So I'll type in 10 and that'll be across the year. And then click save once again. And then next will be on fleet travel. So this is kind of laid out in a very similar way to the business travel tab. Uh, the main distinction is that the fleet travel kind of refers to any vehicles that are owned by your organization. Uh, so again, if you choose the mode of transport, you can, it essentially works exactly the same way. So it's just a slightly different choice of vehicles because obviously the organization is not as likely to own a bus or a train. And then finally, uh, we have the Beyond Carbon survey. So this is the final page of all of the reports within the um, footprints. Um, essentially about going beyond the basic carbon numbers to capture a bit of the qualitative information around what you do as an organization. Uh, please note that the Beyond Carbon survey does not contribute to your overall carbon footprint figure. So it's a sort of nominal survey to do at the end to paint a sort of more a richer picture of what you do on a day to day basis. Um, so the survey is broken down into a few different areas. So it starts off with everyday good practice. So that's things like your energy consumption, water and waste. And then goes down to governance and leadership. So that includes things like your strategies as an organization, your policies, how you invest your money, um, how you divide these responsibilities as an organization. And then we also have creative programs and engagement. So that's more uh, sort of how you engage with your stakeholders, shareholders and things like that, um, and your audience um, about the climate crisis. And then finally, number four gives you a chance to explain some of your, if you've benefited in any ways from your environmental action, or if you haven't, if you feel like you've had some negative impacts, you can input that as well. Um, so you can talk about, you can also talk about how your attitudes have changed based on this kind of education as well. So then once we're done, we can click the submit button and then we can click submit footprint. Okay, and now that's submitted. So then that should show up if we go back onto the data page and we click on the footprints tab here. And then we go, so yeah, we have this here. So this is different ways of looking at your footprint. So this is organized by building. Um, so we have the venue that we just did here. Uh, and then projects as well. So this is, this is reserved specifically for project footprint. So our venue won't be showing up here. And then this will show all of your projects and buildings on a year by year basis. So that's useful to have if you want to look back at your old data. So going back to buildings, uh, you can see here that we have footprints going back multiple years somewhere. Yeah, there to see. Um, so the idea is that if I came back in 12 months time and wanted to add a new year of data, I wouldn't be needing to set up these buildings from scratch. I could go to the data page and add a new year to the building using the process just shown. Um, so a new function has been added where users are now able to copy data from previous reports as well. So all you have to do is find the footprint report you would like to copy. So let's say I want to copy this one. Um, click copy. And then I'll just click type in menu A 2024. And then now I've got an exact copy of this entire footprint. So that also includes all of the data that I've entered. Okay. So right. 
Sorry, one second. Okay, I'm gonna give a brief explanation of our project footprints as well, because there's a lot of repetition between different ones. So I'm just gonna give it an explanation of the tour one for now. Uh, so this footprint can be used to capture emissions from a tour, whether that's a theater tour, music tour, or a touring production of any nature. Uh, basically, this footprint report looks like the show power looks at the show power and the travel involved from moving as part of the tour. So again, we're going to have a similar layout with all the tabs running across the top of the page. Um, however, the tabs themselves are slightly different, as you can see. Uh, so if we start with the general tab, the, this asks for some basic information about the tour, which will be sort of similar to the buildings one. Um, but the tabs themselves are slightly different. Um, so next we have performances. So this will give you an opportunity to kind of divide out your different performances across the tour. So we have them arranged by size. So it'll be large, very large, large, medium, small, medium, and micro, small. And then you can also divide them between, I know, sorry, yeah, this is specifically for outdoor performances and this one's for indoor performances. And then within accommodation, this is very similar to the um, business travel tab where you just type in the number of accommodation nights here. Um, so yeah, that's exactly the same function. And then for personnel travel, this is where you'd record information regarding the sort of individuals traveling as part of the tour. Uh, so this would be should be available by your travel agent or internally through your fleet operator or production team. Uh, so similar to similarly to the other travel tabs, you should have the ability to enter the data in terms of the distance traveled, total fuel used, or total electri electricity used um, for the journeys. So all of the modes of transport are listed out, and this tab also includes the ability to record chartered flights, which are down here and domestic short haul and long haul flights as well. So if you move on to production, this is the last one of the tour tab. Uh, so this includes the ability to record data around things like show power and the freighting of materials. Um, at the top, we have a field for the estimated show power for the production. So this should be available from the production supplier or maybe the venue team as well. Uh, and then just below this, this section is where you would enter information about the larger vehicles being used by organization to transport sets and larger materials. Uh, this tab is laid out again in a very similar way to the previous tab. Uh, however, there are two, two sort of bits of data that you need for this. So you also need to include the weight of the, um, of the freight as well. Otherwise it won't, it will just calculate as a zero. Um, we do have some averages available for this, so if you require that, then you can get in touch with the help desk team. If you if you don't know an estimate of your of your weight, um, so there's also the op opportunity to sort of distinguish between different trucks. So we've got biodiesel rigged, biodiesel diesel articulated, medium, heavy, light, and bike articulated. Um, so then, if we go. to the production tool. This is another example of our project. Um, and again, it's, it's got a very similar sort of layout to the, to the, to the, um, to all of them. It's got the, the same tabs. Um, so if we go onto the set design and management tab, um, this focuses on two sort of main set materials. So steel and timber, which are the, I guess the, the primary sort of tools that would be uh, materials that would be used for creating a set. Um, so this information should be obtained through the production team. Um, at the top, you can enter data regarding different timber types. Uh, so their source or their size, um, and also just the type of wood that they are as well. Um, and then an important part as well is the recording basically what happens to the this timber at the end of its life so 
if it was sent to landfill or incinerated, recycled, or maybe even reused. Um, the percentage for each destination can be entered here, and this would have to add up to 100%. Um, and then it's quite similar for steel below as well, but this is more just to do with the, the weight of the steel rather than different types and uh, where it's sourced from. So then if we go on to lighting, sound, and effects, um, this tab sort of starts with the ability to record data relating to your lighting rig use during rehearsals and shows. So there is also the option to enter information regarding the energy consumption of your sound system, um, projection equipment, and the automation. Uh, this will help to give you an idea of the impact of an individual production that you're working on. So with impacts in mind, let's look at the results page again. Again, it might take a moment to load. Okay. So all of your submitted reports will go here in the results section. So this is where you can really kind of have a proper look at the data that you've provided rather than just seeing it as numbers. Um, so we have four main sort of sub pages within this. We have summary, compare, detail, and benchmarks. So on the first page, you'll see a summary of all the data in your account for specific years. So currently we're looking at all of our results for 2022 to 23. Um, and then there's a pie chart here which has an overall split of your emissions into the different impact areas of the year selected. Uh, the graphs can also be manipulated to show more granular information about the section. So if we click on energy here, you'll see that our energy is divided between energy, uh, electricity, gas, and energy other. Um, and the data can also be viewed in another way by clicking on the little subheading view by footprint. So this gives an idea of your emissions across different footprints. So you can see specific areas that are kind of performing more. I mean, obviously the audience travel for this outdoor event was must have been massive. And then the, this one had a bit more energy. So you can really interrogate that a little bit more and, and divide that out by your project. So on these pages, there's also the opportunity to download the pie charts, graphs, and tables of data. So for the pie charts and graphs, you just go to the three lines here, uh, and then you can click download in any format that you like. So you can do it as a JPEG. And then, well, I'm trying to open it, but that's fine. <laughs> um, okay. So if we go to compare, this is where you can sort of compare your data across different years once it's loaded. Okay. So this page allows you to compare your results from year to year. Uh, on the right hand side, you can choose to compare all of your reports, or you can also choose a specific building or project to compare. So if we do here to see. And submit. So that shows just the just the building for theatre C. Um, and then if you, you only want to see within a certain number of years, so for example, if I just wanted to compare this year to last year, yeah. I could do comparison since and then last year's period, and then that would show it like this. Um, and then so yeah, if this is your first year of reporting, you'll only be able to see one year of data. But basically, the more you use the tool, the more this section will be useful for you to understand uh, your performance trends, basically. Uh, so when looking at individual reports, you can also show results by either the total values or by different metrics. So for example, we're currently looking at the emissions figure for this theater. But if we wanted to, we could compare the carbon footprint per floor area or per visitor or per performance to see how the emissions change year on year. So. Let's give this a go. 
So this is the emissions per meter squared for the year, per visitor. Must have had no audience data for this one. But anyway, um, so if we could move on to detail. So this is the detail page which summarizes the data entered for an individual footprint report. So you can use the drop downs at the side, similarly to the compare tab to toggle this by report and by year. So again, you can do any of these projects. Let's do venue A. So this is the one I just did. You can see all of the data that I entered and the calculations that it created. Um, and then if we do benchmarks, uh, so for the CC tools, we have several benchmarks in place, which will allow you to compare the impact of your organization against a building or an event of a similar size. Uh, this example, this for example, is an office. Yeah, the head office, uh, where the benchmark data is based on the floor area. At the bottom of the graph, you can see a comparison for electricity, gas and water use. And on the right hand side, in yellow is the data that we have entered. And on the left in orange is the benchmark figure. So you can sort of see <laughs> this office is quite overperforming. Um, but looking at the results, we're over for gas and very much over for electricity, uh, for water. but slightly lower for electricity. And then one more thing I can show you is the documents page. So this is where, as Kaz mentioned, you should be uploading your environmental policy and your environmental action plan. Um, so that will be part of your agreement with Arts Council England. So you can just click here, upload a document, choose which type of document it is, and then upload it here. Okay, so let's go back to the home page. Okay, so this is your home page, which is yeah, just an overall summary of the data in your account. So we have this pie chart for this year's um, results, and you can view the results in more detail by clicking this or going here. Um, we have the total carbon footprint for the most recent year of data. So the 22 to 23. And on the right hand side, you can see the various reports which contribute to this footprint. And you can click on any of them to continue editing. Um, and at the bottom, you can see some of the trends of some key impact areas which are compared for your previous year of data. So you can see that for the most part, there's been some, some reduced um, consumptions. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it for me. Um, I think we'll take a short break now. I'm not sure if Kaz, did you want to say anything or is it all good? Hi Richard, great. Thank you ever so much. Um, okay, we're going to take a short break just to thank you very much for all the questions. We are trying to get through them. There's lots that are quite similar, so we're going to answer some of those live. Um, what time is it? Five to two. So we'll come back at five past two and we will um, summarise some of the questions that we've already answered, but also try and get to some of the other questions that we haven't got to yet. Um, and I would just like to say the recording that it is being recorded, we are going to upload it and we will get to every single question, whether that's in the session today or after the session, and we will upload those um, answers to all of the questions. So everything will be answered. Um, yeah, great. So we'll come back. We'll see you back at five past two to look at the Q&A. Thank you. Hello. Thanks, Luby. Hello. Welcome back. Um, OK, so. Richard, Lucas, are we there? Lovely, thank you. Um, okay, so we're gonna work our way through um, as many of the questions as we can within the next 54 minutes and answer. There have been um, a few quite, uh, a few similar questions. So we're gonna group those together. And as I said before, 
anything we don't get to, we will, it will be recorded, it's been recorded and it will be uploaded. So um, if your question isn't answered in this session, it will be after the session. So the first question we're going to address is this, um, the question of shared office space, hot desking, um, not having access to bills. Um, that's come up several times, both on the Q&A and Zoom. Rich, I think I'm gonna pass to you for this one. Yeah, sure, Kaz. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so the question of if you've got a shared office space um, or shared space which you do your productions, um, essentially that you don't own um, the space and you don't have a, a whole floor within it, for example, this is essentially an offline calculation. Um, and what we would suggest is that you speak to your landlords to get a breakdown of the utility bills. Um, and uh, if the landlord, who, who should have all the information for the building, can provide you with that, then you can estimate your proportion of those bills by dividing the total floor space that you actually use. Um, and again, the landlord, if you don't have information on how much uh, floor space you use from the whole building, again, your landlord should be able to tell you that information. So it's just a simple um, division you know, using the total bills divided by how much space you use in the building, and that should give you um, a good estimate of your proportion of the bills. Lovely, thanks Richard. Um, okay, I'm going to move down to electric vehicles. Okay, so this is a question from Connor. We have a single electric vehicle which is charged exclusively on site using our 100% renewable electricity. Is there any option to use energy tariff for electric vehicle or does it just use that standard energy source breakdown? Uh, so with uh, sort of green, I guess, so you're asking, I guess, if green tariffs should be included within um, your overall footprint, even though it says it's 100% renewable. Um, I guess that's the question. Um, I would say that basically we, we, the way we see it is that it's still electricity that's coming from the grid and it's kind of, um, it, when, when electricity comes from the grid, it's not as easy as just being able to say that it's come from a renewable source because you've paid for a renewable tariff is actually a little bit more complicated than that. So it's kind of unreliable. So for now, for, for the sense of, like, because it makes a little bit more sense, we've decided to have it just as a general grid um, calculation, if that makes sense. Sorry, that was a quite a convoluted explanation. <laughs> Thanks, Lucas. Um, this might be a bit of a repetition. I'm just going to read this one out. So this is from L. What would you recommend for an organisation that is based in a building that runs other organisations and projects? Would you enter data for the building as a whole and add in notes that we run other projects within it? Or would you only put in a percentage split over the projects? So if I've understood that correctly, um there are multiple things going on inside the building and the question is whether um, to account for, for all of those things. I guess the answer to that is that if they fall within the remit of your organisation, i.e. you're responsible for those other activities, then yes, you should be reporting all of that information as part of your footprint. Again, if there are other things that are going on inside the building um, from other organisations, so you're not uh, responsible for everything that's going on inside that building, then um, yeah, you would need to uh, do, as I said in my previous answer, that you would need to get the information probably from the landlord or the um, facilities manager uh, to get the information for the whole building. And then you essentially get your proportion of that total based on um, how much space you're taking up with all of those productions that you have going on inside the building to make sure that you're only accounting for your emissions and not for someone else's emissions within the building. I hope that answers the question. Um, I'm just going to go back. So there, there's a question with the data for accommodation. It states hotels as the type of accommodation. Is this also where we put local digs accommodation data? Now, we have answered this question to say yeah, that the tours did used to have a family, friends and family function, but we've actually that's been removed as uh, the footprint associated with it would essentially be zero. Now, um, in our last session, we may have indicated that it should be hotel but actually it's zero because the, um, yeah, as I said, the carbon footprint associated with staying at a mate's house is essentially zero because it would be accounted for them. Hopefully that clears that up.
<laughs> you're muted. Sorry, muted myself, sorry. Um, right, is there a way of bulk uploading data, for example, adding all buildings in our network, network in one CSV file? Um, I'll take that one if you want. <laughs> the answer is no, I'm afraid there isn't. That would be wonderful and it would make everyone's job a lot easier, but I'm afraid there isn't a way yet. Okay, moving on. Um, uh, right, there's a question about age. Now, this is, it's an audience travel. So we cannot collect data from people under the age of 18. Um, so how, essentially, how do we collect uh, audience travel if we're looking, if the audience is under the age of 18? Um, I mean, so for an audience travel, survey or a survey in general I, I guess we'd never really expect you to be able to collect 100 percent of the audience anyway so i guess just get data on as many people as you're able to and try and use that and if you really don't feel like that is representative of of your actual audience body then you, you can always use the defaults but um yeah I, I don't know if there's much to say that people under the age of 18 would be traveling differently so i'm not sure if that would i mean I, I guess it would be good to have a, a more representative sort of pool of uh candidates but um yeah i think just collect from as many people as you can basically richard have you got anything to add to that because obviously you've got touring focus um no i think that's a good response from lucas um it i guess it depends if uh, in terms of how material it is if it's uh, an event that you're putting on or um, a certain exhibition which is um, specifically for those under the age of 18, because that will have, uh, if you're not able to get collect that information at all, or even kind of provide an estimate, then that has um, a greater impact on the thing that you're reporting for. But in general, as Lucas says, you can um, quite easily provide those estimates. And if it is trying to capture, um, for example, all the information from families, um, then it might be that um, you can make the assumption that if uh, families are going, then they'll um, those who, who are aged under under 18 obviously won't be traveling by car um, and uh, they'll be traveling by public transport and if they're families then it will be you'll be reporting the information in the same way um, that you would if they were over the age of 18 anyway um, so it kind of depends on the type of event that you're you're running but um, in general I think as Lucas says you can use the the averages uh, to estimate lovely thanks and um, we've got a question but I'm going to do a couple of questions together. These are all touring questions now, Richard. Um, so a question about the show power on the touring tab. What is that value? Is that the actual power consumed at the venue and added together for each venue? Or is this the power requirements for one show during the tour? And we are a touring company. Do you, should I do this separately? I'll let you answer that one first. <laughs> Um, so again, it depends what you're reporting for. If you're reporting um, and for an individual show, um, then it will be for that individual show and it will be the show power um, that's reported. I mean, organisations do do this differently. Um, the simplest way of doing it is to get the information um, from the venue for that one, uh, one night if you are reporting for one show. Um, but this can equally be challenging because you're, you'll be chasing data uh, from the venue. But um, another way of going about it is actually looking at the power specification of the equipment that you're using. Um, so that's something that you can very easily do before the show. Um, so you know how much power will be used by your equipment. Um, and the second part of that question was about whether it's for one show or all shows. Um, as I said at the beginning, it, it depends on what you're reporting for. If you're reporting for the whole tour um, rather than one individual show, then you can add up um, or, or use a, kind of a multiplier really um, for how much energy is used for one show and times that by how many shows that you're doing. So there are two options, as I say, you can either um, use the venue energy usage or to be more specific about the equipment you're using, you can look at the power specification um, of the equipment that you'll be using for that show. Brilliant, thanks Richard. Um, and then another touring question we have, we are a touring company, so do you need two separate data submissions for the production as well as the tour? Oh, go ahead, Lucas. Um, uh, if you, basically the production tour is sort of primarily for the sort of 
design of the the set and things like that and the type of materials that you use so a lot of people will use the production tool as a kind of uh complementary aspect of the of the touring footprint so if you if you have the data for production then that would be give a really useful idea of your emissions from that but um yeah the, if you're if you're just touring and you're only required to report on touring then you wouldn't be expected to include production thanks lucas uh, there's a quick one here can you enter data across the year or is it open for may june each year so at the moment the reporting period is open specifically for the 22 23 portfolio and that's that's the may and june window but in terms of entering data, you can enter data right across the year. As um, Lucas said in, in his demonstration, save your data. You can come back to it. Um, it doesn't get submitted until you, until you press submit. So you can yeah, do it in um, as, as you go throughout the year. Lucas? Yeah, it's worth um, specifying the like reporting period itself is kind of it's designed so that there's more assistance from, from us in terms of the help desk and the the telephone helpline and things like that so this is a period where we'll be more on hand to specifically help you with any inquiries about reporting and then that's in the lead up to the 30th of june deadline so yeah lovely thank you um a question here on the beyond date beyond carbon data is the beyond carbon data included in the overall footprint as in does it affect the carbon calculation uh, I can jump in on that. Um, no, it doesn't. Um, the Beyond Carbon section is more about actions that you might be taking or might be considering. Um, none, none of the information that you put in there will affect the um, quantitative carbon footprint. Thank you. Um, Joe, I've just seen a comment, uh, but it's not completely zero. There is still a provision of bedding. You're absolutely right. There is, it, but it's a very, very, very minimal carb uh, footprint. So in terms of entering data, that would be um, negligible in terms of uh, fam family and friends and staying on couches. Um, what if we have no access to audience travel data? Can we just omit this section? Um, I think this probably applies to several of the tabs. So if someone wants to just talk about if you don't have data. Yeah, so I mean, with audience travel, if you still want to get an idea of your audience travel, you can use defaults. But also, if you really don't feel like this this represents your your audience travel data, then you can leave it out. Um, yeah, best if you just sort of let us know if you if you aren't able to report on anything, and we might either be able to help you think of a way to get an estimate, or you know, we can we can we're also able to write down that you're exempt from reporting on this specific thing if you really can't get the data so yeah you can contact the help desk at any time to kind of get some guidance on this i'd also add that doing a carbon footprint um is is not something that everyone can kind of immediately completely cover all bases on um it is a, a process and uh, we encourage everyone to fill in as much data as they possibly can as lucas says um, and if there are gaps, you know, that's kind of natural once you're starting this process and over time you can build up uh, a better picture. Um, so uh, don't be afraid, especially if you're one of the smaller MPOs, if you don't have information for every category yet, um, it is a process and you can build that up over time and uh, make sure to use uh, Lucas and um, everyone on the help desk um, at Julie's Bicycle to be able to answer your questions on your data needs to start building that picture. Thanks, Richard. Um, I'm going to move over to homeworking. There's been a couple of questions on homeworking. I'll just read one of them, but perhaps one of you could talk around it. Um, does every home worker enter the energy details for their home and do they work out the energy use for their work time or does the tool do that calculation? We have answered this one, but perhaps if one of you could just talk around homeworking. Yeah, so the, the tools will do that calculation for you. All you need to do is put in the number of hours that you've been working from home across the whole year so any staff that have worked from home um like if, if, if even if it's a just one week of the year you can calculate that number of hours and that will do that calculation of energy for you so you don't need to go asking people for their energy bills or anything like that lovely thanks lucas 
Um, a question that's come up several times, um, should business travel include commuting? This has come up a few times. Uh, no, it shouldn't. It's just, it's just for business related travel, essentially. So anything like getting the bus to a meeting outside of the office or something like that. Yeah, we, we haven't included commuting uh, so far, but well, I won't say that that's something we're going to include in the future because we might not, but yeah. Yeah, and to get your head around the difference of that, because um, it can be sometimes a bit confusing when you know it's still using tra the word travel, if it's commuting travel or um, business travel. Um, commuting, you can consider, is, is kind of personal travel. Um, so it's not directly related to your, your business activities, as it were. So that's the way that you can kind of hold two things in your in your brain at once. That, um, business travel is more to do with uh, specific, uh, travel that's related specifically to business activities during the working day. Um, train travel to meetings, things like that, rather than commuting to work. Thanks both. Um, as a new MPO, can we use the tool to estimate the carbon footprint of some of our 22, 23 anyway, to give us a benchmark for the coming year? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can, um, anyone, even if you're not an MPO or anything, you can enter data and I mean you can go back even further than that if you want to if you if you have that data yeah you can do that calculation whenever you like and um, just to add to that as well we uh, in some of the updates that are coming up there is a forecasting button that will be added so um, yeah keep make sure you're signed up to the newsletter make sure you're looking at the website because you'll be able to see when that update is released Uh, what is informing the calculations? How are the calculations made? GHG protocol or something else? So I'd like to talk about methodology. Uh, yeah, it's a it's kind of a combination from different sources, but um, for the most part, it's from the base. So it's BEIS. I can't remember exactly what that stands for now, but um, yeah, we, but we also pull some some from GHG protocol as well. Um, so if there's anything that's not covered by base, but we really want to include it, then we'll try and find it from other sources. But it's always something that we feel is, you know, it will be a credible source, definitely. Um, there is a question here. Can we copy, copy over our office data from last year and make edits to it? Uh, oh, sorry, did you want to go, Richard? Um, well, I was going to say from uh, from the basis of the numbers, then I guess I guess you can do that in terms of um, uh, copying it, kind of yeah, copy and pasting. But I'm not sure if you can, but make sure that you do update it with this year's data. Essentially, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but Lucas, I'll, I'll let you answer whether you can actually make a, a direct copy or whether that will be kind of a more manual process of copy and pasting the information. In. Yeah, sorry, this is something I actually, I think I accidentally uh, skipped past it a little bit when I was presenting, but I'll share my screen now and show you exactly how you can do that, because there is a specific function for doing this. So hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, so if you're on the data page here, you can actually go down and then there's add a new year of data from your existing building or projects. So buildings and projects here. So say I wanted to to um, venue A, and then I can go and add a new year of data for, for this one and click add. And then, so that keeps things like, well, they didn't put in any um, floor space data, but it, it keeps things like that. And then it makes all of these areas blank. So that's probably the easiest way to do it other than copying. Yeah, hope that helps. Thanks, Lucas. Um, digital footprints. Does the tools uh, have, do, does the reporting tool have a facility for measuring digital carbon footprints? 
No, it doesn't because it's um, a very difficult area and um, there isn't a great deal of transparency and information on this currently, um, mainly because uh, well, very complicated reasons about servers being connected to uh, different digital platforms and the transparency of that information, the footprint from, from, from those is very hard to ascertain. Um, there are really useful um, things that are out there. The connected network is something that, that can be used for digital artworks um, and, uh, uh, and that can kind of take you step by step. But again, it's a quite a high level estimate. Yeah, and just to say that if you did really want to include um, that kind of emission inside the tool, you could always use the custom emissions bit at the bottom of the energy tab or something like that if you if you feel like it fits into your carbon footprint thanks both um a couple of questions just on um sort of general sign up things so can more than one person log into an organization account or is it email registration per organization and we have to share that password uh, i will take that no it, it's so each organization has an account and um, you can have as many users as you want sign up and, and be associated with that account. Um, and then I'm here as an, in, a non-NPO. Will I still be able to access all tools and resources signed up through the General ACE newsletter? Yes, you can. The tools are available to everybody. Um, so yes, you just need to, I think do it, I think it's other, uh, so it's either non-NPO or other when you're actually signing up to the tool. So if you just click on that and then it won't submit your data to the ACE um, report function. Um, okay, there's a question here, homeworking question. And actually this is a quite a new function. So I'm not sure who's best placed to answer this one. So hi, can I just check how to express the number of full-time employees, please? We are a team of 13, but only six are proper full-time earners. The remainder are all part-time varying from 10 hours to full four full days per week. Do I add together all their contracted weekly hours and work out the equivalent of full time? Any advice on that? Uh, well, basically it doesn't need to be on a full-time basis essentially. Um, so if, for example, if you're full-time and you work one day a week from home, you would put eight hours times 52. Um, so, and if you're part-time and you work a certain number of hours per week from home, you could do the, do the same. It would be more, more on an hourly basis. So it doesn't matter too much what the contract is for the employee, I suppose. It's more about if you can figure out the number of hours across the year that they have worked from home. Um, and there's different ways of doing that. There's sort of time trackers and things like that, but also there's, you know, if you can create a kind of estimate that you feel comfortable with, then that's totally fine too. Lovely, thanks, Lucas. Um, so there was a question and a response. So let's, um, the first question was, do we only report on direct water use, not indirect water footprints? And we've replied, you should report on water or water impacts that you have information for. Please, could you explain what direct in water impacts you might report on? Um, and we've had a re response to this one. So, um, Richard, did you want to take this? Because I know that you've... Um... Yeah, this, this is an interesting one. Um, so the person asking this question um, was talking about indirect water impacts specifically related to food. Um, now, if I've understood that correctly, um, that's more to do with the water footprint rather than the, the carbon footprint impacts. This is kind of a wider environmental impact about water usage. We obviously do have um, a water section in there, which includes some water impacts, but mainly um, that is to do with uh, kind of more um, operational direct building water usage put into carbon footprint terms rather than the wider water footprint of your impacts. So it's amazing if you've got that information, not a lot of people uh, do, um, but you'd probably report those as uh, separately to the carbon footprints um, rather because uh, it's a, a water footprint specifically um, rather than entering it into this tool. Lovely, thanks, Richard. We've still got quite a lot of questions coming in. Um, trying to keep up with them all. Right. Um, oh, okay. Someone has asked about, can you tell us more about the green, 
the, the Creative Green Certification, I'll answer this one. The Creative Green Certification has, has ceased, it has ended. Um, there is talk about something else, but that's just in talks at the moment. So for now, it, um, if you did do the green, uh, Creative Green Certification, you will still be able to get, log on, that function will still be available so you can look at your um, previous records, but yet yeah, it is no longer. And how do you let ACE know if everyone has completed the reporting? And I can answer this one too, guys. Um, we keep a record of everyone that's reported and we speak to ACE on a very regular basis throughout uh, the reporting period and give them numbers and so they know how many and who has reported throughout. Um, Thank you. Hi. Hi, we run an event annually. Should we add a new year of data as Lucas has just explained for this year, or should we begin a new project for 2023? Uh, if you, if it's the same exact event, just like a, the next year on, um, well, I suppose you can do it either way really, because I mean, I, I would say that it would it might make the most sense to add it as a new year because then you can have it all in one place and then there are certain details that you won't have to edit. But um, you can also, if you feel it's easier, you can also add a new project footprint, but you'll probably have to give it a different name. Um, but you can also just put 2023 at the end of it, something like that. Thanks, Lucas. Uh, does the MPO survey form part of the footprint data? No, it doesn't. But what it does is inform us how the program has gone, your feedback on the program. So it's really, 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 really useful for, for us. Um, and hence the, the prize draw. If you complete it, you get entered into a prize draw and you win. I, I'm not sure what you win. I'm really sorry. That's, that's bad. I can't remember what it is. If anyone, if anyone on the team knows, then please do shout. Uh, is there a PDF guide? On all the info covered today it would be helpful to have it written down to go back to yes um so the the recording the, the webinar is recorded the questions will all be written down in uh, a document and put onto the website um and i should also add the resources that are already on the website so there is pdf guides going through everything that lucas has gone through today with you there is um, a collection, data collection template if you wanted to take it offline. And there is also um, Marina, our other colleague, there is a video on there going through how to use the tools on the website as well. So there are lots and lots of resources on the, on the website for you to look at. Um, okay. We use a lot of smaller venues and some of these are given in kind. Some will not have their data and some will not be able to provide it. Would we omit building data for these venues or is there a way of making an estimate? Um, well, yes, there, there will be a way of making an estimate, um, but that will be something that you would need to do offline rather than something that you do within the, the calculator itself. So you say that some of the venues um, might not have data. So if there are some which you can get data for, um, and it'd be good to know um, as part of that, how big the venue is um, uh, by floor area, for example, or by capacity. Uh, and that sh on the basis of that, you should then be able to estimate data for the other venues. Um, but as I say, this will be something that you probably need to do offline yourself in an Excel spreadsheet and then enter the information in um, to the calculator. The calculator can't help you uh, make those estimates for each of the, of the venues, but hopefully you can use something which can provide a bit of a benchmark. Thanks, Richard. Is exhibition design classed as a production? How do we log an exhibition lasting over a year, or is it a permanent gallery in a museum or art gallery building? It's a tricky one. Um, so the, oh, I don't know the best way to, I think it would be, uh, would it be an, an indoor event that, that you would do? Yeah. 
potentially, I think it might be a case of looking at the data that you have available and seeing which is the most relevant footprint. Um, I, I'm not sure if we've got a name for that one. So perhaps whoever that whoever asked that question, perhaps if you could um, send that question to our support email and we can give you some, some more specific guidance on that. Uh, just trying to group some of these questions together because there are some similar ones. Um, okay, we don't have our own venue, but deliver projects in partner venues across Manchester. How can this be reflected or would that be within the event reporting? Yeah, that would be within event reporting, basically. Um, so you wouldn't need to put it as a, you wouldn't need to make a, a venue footprint for each one, it would be more if it was a if it was an indoor venue you could do an indoor event or a, an outdoor event for an outdoor venue um yeah try not to put you guys on the spot at the moment with these questions some of them we might have to uh, look at further um how do you log the number of museum visitors to your ongoing offer as opposed to temporary events performances and exhibitions Yeah, I did see that one. Um, unless um, either of you have any other thoughts, I mean, I, th I think it'd be good to know um, the the reason to to split that information out. Um, if is that because you want to create two different footprints, one potentially for the building and then one potentially for an event? Um, if that's the case, then you can split that information out if you have um, that information from um, ticket sales, for example, ticket sales to a specific. Um, event that's going on inside the building versus general admission tickets. That's how you would get that information um, if you do need to split it out. Um, but in general, you might you might not need to actually go into that granular detail and you can just have the number of visitors to um, the, the site generally. Um, so you'd only need that information if you were creating a specific footprint for that temporary exhibition. Um, and you can get that information through ticket sales. Lucas Carroll, is there anything to add to that? Um, not nothing that valuable. I mean, that within the general tab of the venue cultural building, there is a uh, space to kind of divide it, divide your attendance between different spaces. So that could potentially be useful for creating that division. But um, I don't think it would necessarily really influence the calculation. Uh, in any way I think it would just be for your own purposes if that's the the way that your data is sort of laid out thanks guys uh this isn't a question this is this is actually more of a comment and actually there was another comment I saw earlier about someone said that they were feeling overwhelmed so I think we do need to just address this um so my organization doesn't have a regular location where our team work we work in a different place every day there isn't even a regular hot desk in sight capturing accurate data for this is going to be very difficult. Um, perhaps someone could just talk about talk around estimates and um, you know we are we're trying to, to get a rough number here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Richard might have something to add because I, I don't really know if um, I can give much detail but um, I would probably recommend Having it mainly based on sort of homeworking data. If if you have um if it really varies, like if you if you don't have any kind of regular spaces, then we're not going to ask you to get a, make a different building footprint for each one of them. So I would probably do it more on more on homeworking and just calculate the number of hours you work and do it based on that because yeah, that's just gonna take you forever. <laughs> I, I completely agree. And um, again, just to make the point that carbon footprinting isn't an exact science. It sometimes feels like that when we're talking about these different terms and you're seeing this calculator and you're um, even referring to it as a calculator makes it sound like it's a really, really exact uh, mathematical problem that you that you can solve. It's not really. It's, um, it's supposed to give you an indication. So if that is the case, um, I mean, this is a good example where estimates are really handy because you don't have one fixed location um, but there are a whole 
number of different areas, audience travel being another one, where it's very difficult to get this accurate information. So it's all about um, making the best estimate um, and uh, kind of improving perhaps that estimate over time with information that you can get. So in this particular example of, um, of different workspaces that you're using, um, completely agree with Lucas that one way that you can do that is to use the homeworking um, uh, estimates that's already provided within the within the tool. Um, another way could be to get information from just one of those places that you that you work at, and then use that as an estimate for everywhere you work at. So, if for example you're working at um, a WeWork or any other shared working spaces um, that might be available um, in kind of the BBC way, um, then you can um, get information perhaps for just one week or or one day of that shared workspace that you're working in and then just use that as an estimate because you'll be using the same amount of space, presumably within each of those workspaces. So it will give you a pretty good idea. It's not an exact accurate uh, number that you absolutely have to strive to get towards. Right, thanks Richard. Um, okay, I'm just gonna read this Okay, comment here. To help those who are feeling overwhelmed, could someone on the call who has collected data and used it in a really impactful way share a brief note of inspiration? For our part, we try not to do work only for a funder. We always make sure we use our data to promote our work and support our business planning. Doing this work has helped us bring in much funding. Make all your work purposeful for you and your trustees would be my advice. And that's a really valid point um I, I would also just to add to that i think um there are lots of case studies an awful lot of case studies that we've got on our on our website that are worth having a look at because there is lots and lots of inspirational um stuff on there that will help you especially with your your business planning going forward i don't know if anyone wants to add anything to that note for those that might be feeling overwhelmed Um, I, I mean, this is a slightly strange answer, but um, we're, we're currently doing a report um, for uh, another user of the, the carbon calculator, another group of users, um, which is more to do with music, which is the area that I tend to focus on. And um, we've got some testimonials in uh, as part of that report. The report isn't released yet, so I, I won't say who said them, but um, I'm reading off the screen here. Um, we've been using the carbon calculator for a while now, and I must say it's been a game changer in our sustainability journey. The tool's user-friendly interface made it incredibly easy for us to calculate our carbon footprint. Submitting our footprint not only gave us a clear understanding of our environmental impact, but also empowered us to make informed choices and actively reduce our carbon emissions. I can tell you that's from a very small um, independent music label. Um, so it is possible. Um, and I know there's been a couple of questions in there about um, feeling overwhelmed, as, as, as Caroline has highlighted. Um, but, you know, we can only stress again that it isn't an exact science and you just need to fill out as, as many of the fields as you can do and then build that picture over time. Great, thank you, Richard. Um, okay, I'm gonna switch back. Um, actually, there's been a couple of questions about no ticketing. So venues which are free to enter, e.g. museums, don't have ticketing data. Can spot survey data for specific events be extrapolate, extrapolated to cover the whole year? And there was something similar, uh, yeah, on non-ticketing data. Anyone talk around that one? Yeah, um, so uh, there should be information. I mean, I think I guess the first point to take a step back from that question is that um, it, all this information doesn't reside in one place. You don't have to have all the answers. Um, it may be that there are other people working within your organisation. Um, that do actually have really good oversight over um, capacity and over um, visitor numbers and things like that. Uh, for example, someone working in marketing might know about the reach um, and might have better information on audience numbers. So do um, uh, lean on them, do lean on other people in the organization that might have that information. Um, but the way that, that uh, it was suggested there that if you don't have information on visitor numbers, can you make an estimate? based on one event, then absolutely that would be a sensible approach to doing it. Um, and it might be the case that you can then check that number against someone who might have a better idea, for example, someone working in marketing uh, for your organization. So you can kind of 
cross-reference that number against something else. But that sounds to me like a sensible solution. Right. There have been several questions about the 23-24 reporting um, requirements. Now, it's slightly different for the 23-24 cohort because um, it's, I don't think it's part, it's, it's not part of your funding agreement, so it's not mandatory. However, um, without this data, we cannot look at what needs changing, what needs help, what needs more resourcing. So um, we want you to carry on reporting and um, reporting, you know, energy, water, waste are the things that, um, and, and travel, sorry, are the things that have the most impact. So if you can get that data, that's what you should be focusing on. I think people have asked what, what are the specifics? It's, it's really about reporting as much as you possibly can with the, with the data that you have. If you don't have your audience data, then that's fine to omit it, but give us as much to work with as possible so that we can, with the um, collective reporting, we can produce um, guidance and resources and all of the, the resources that we share so freely on our website, I think would be my answer. I don't know if anyone's got anything to add to that on the 23, 24 reporting. Okay, we've got... Um, Would a music festival across multiple venues be submitted as new project? Uh, sorry, could you repeat that, Kaz? Sure. Would a music fe festival across multiple venues be submitted as new project? I suppose it could be considered a tour in a way. I think that would maybe be the best way for it to fit within the tools um, because then then you can track sort of different shows at different venues and different sizes potentially. Um, yeah, and that would be a new project. Yeah, I'm not sure if um, there's any other ideas, <laughs> but yeah. No, again, I think that makes sense. Um, and goes back to what uh, was referenced earlier that it might be a case of just looking through the different calculators and actually seeing for yourself which one fits best. Um, so I, I agree with Lucas that I think that's probably the first port of call is that you could enter it as a tour, um, but you could also enter it um, if you wanted to as, as separate events really. Um, and that can come um, as separate parts of the calculator so entering a new project each time, which I think the question might be alluding to as well or you can kind of aggregate all that information um, offline if you wanted to, and then put all the all of them in for every uh, show that took place uh, across the festival in all the venues in one place. Um, it's up to you. I think the simplest way, the way that I would do it is probably as Lucas outlined um, as a tour and then entering um, each as a specific show. Thanks Richard. Um, again, don't want to put everyone on the spot, but uh, is there any way to recognise the impact of access requirements for disabled people on the data? For example, wheelchair users needing to use taxis rather than public transport. Companies that are disabled led or working with disabled people may compare unfavourably in benchmark comparisons due to the barriers they need to navigate. That's a really interesting question. Yeah, that's a really good point and something that we should potentially discuss more with it within the team. But um, I can't, I don't think that there is really a way that we would be able to account for that specifically within the tools or, I mean, you could, you could put it in the notes section of, of the, um, of the footprint, because that always, it's always good to give more details about where your emissions are coming from and that that's not going to affect the overall number or the benchmarking, but um it's good to make a note of that so that we can get an idea of the source of that and potentially look into including that in the future. Yeah, agreed. I think that's real food for thought and one for us to take back to the team. Thank you. Uh, so would you recommend collecting travel data via the MPO survey, i.e. asking mode of transport for this? I'm not sure if I understand that question. Uh, 
So the, so the MPO survey, that is to inform us on the programme rather than that's not data. So your travel data, if you've got data and numbers for the travel, that would be within the tools, depending on which, which tool you used. Uh, okay. I'm just, we're getting close to time here. Um, how do you record outreach exhibitions in community venues not owned by us? Anyone suggestions for this one? I would probably do that as an indoor event, but I think, yeah, as, as has been said a couple of times, it would be a case of looking at the data that you have available and seeing where it fits best really. But um, I would, yeah, I would assume that it would be best fitted for a for an indoor event. Um, if it's a one-off thing at a venue that isn't run by you, then that would be what I would probably recommend mostly. Um, can you only enter audience travel data under a venue cultural building footprint? Uh, no, you can also, so with outdoor and indoor events, you can as well. I think that's, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you can't with productions or touring or for offices, but for, yeah, for indoor events, outdoor events and uh, venue uh, slash cultural building, you can do it. I think this is probably a time also just to talk about the updates. This is an important one. There are updates coming. Make sure you are signed up to the newsletter because um, some of these things will be addressed in some of the new functionality that's coming later in the year. Uh, okay. Oh, answer that. Oh, it's just coming. Hold on. Uh, we run an annual event that is both outdoor and in two community buildings. Would I record this as outdoor or indoor event? Uh, I would probably consider doing it as two separate events footprints for that. Uh, so you can still have it under the same name, but you could have the, I mean, it depends on the, the ticketing and the attendance and how much it's going to flow between those two spaces, I suppose. But um. You could all, yeah, you could always divide it between two different footprints, I suppose. I don't know if there's, if anyone has any more insight than that. Um, I think we would just need a bit more clarity on whether it's um, an event that happens outdoor and then happens at another point indoor, in which case um, I, I, I would agree with how Lucas set that out. Um, if it's an event that's partly outdoor, partly indoor, um, then I probably would suggest to record just um, one footprint um, and again using the one that uh, works best for the, the data that you've got. I don't think there's a huge amount of difference between indoor and outdoor events in terms of the information that's collected. So it might be that you just select um, if it's predominantly outdoor, for example, um, using the, the outdoor events uh, calculator. Um, and then you can add in the notes that there's also a part of the, the event which is indoor. But if it is two separate events happening at different in different venues, um, throughout the year, then you can record separate things. Thanks, Richard. Um, right, it's five to, I think we've probably got time for maybe two more questions. Um, let's see, what have we got? Um, so is the commute, okay, so this was a follow-up to a previous um, question. So is the commute, personal travel, considered to be part of the individual's carbon footprint rather than the organisations? I think that's kind of a debatable subject, really. I mean, I think a lot of people would consider it part of the organisation's footprint, but um, it's just, it's not something that we include in the tools right now. And it's also not something that's required by Arts Council England but to to include so yeah i don't know i suppose you could look at it either way but um yeah anything to add 
Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think it is about um, Arts Council's requirements, um, which is why it hasn't been included. But there are many companies uh, using the greenhouse gas protocol, which would use, uh, which would capture commuting emissions, and that would be part of their scope three. So, so an organisation's indirect emissions. Um, and I think we want to avoid um, uh, dividing emissions up into too many kind of responsibilities. It's not as if um, old staff commuting is an individual's responsibility. It's not ours because we don't include it in the footprint because there's so much obviously that um, organizations can do to help staff, um, uh, to encourage staff to travel and commute more sustainably, whether it's through cycle to work schemes or through um, uh, electric charging points and um, and things like that and, um, and train travel and bus travel, season tickets. So um, it's not really about who's Kind of responsibility it is this is more just for um, what the the tool currently captures um so if you did want to capture um commuting then then you absolutely can do that it's just not part of um the tools currently and um, we definitely would uh, in encourage you to still be considering ways in which you can um, lower emissions from commuting from from all of your colleagues lovely thank you both um Okay, I think that's probably all we've got time for. I'm, I'm sorry that we haven't got to all of the questions. I will say it again, we will get to all of the questions after this session. That's what we'll be doing this afternoon. Um, I would like just like to end, Jack has put a lovely comment in here, which I'd like to read to everybody. I'm not sure if they can see it or not, but hi, I'd just like to add to Richard's comments about not feeling overwhelmed. We are a very small music venue running with minimal people. I have no idea how we would have managed to calculate our carbon tool carbon footprint apologies, without your amazing tool and your super helpful team. Our team members using the tool would not describe themselves as numbers or computer types. However, we have now managed to start building up several years worth of data, which is incredibly helpful. Having joined this webinar, I will now feel more confident looking, approaching the more confident looking approaching the calculator for this year's event. Thank you. That's a really, really, really lovely comment. Thank you very much. And um, so I know I've said it several times, all of this will be made available to you on the website. We will ensure that we get to all of the questions. Some of the questions we haven't answered um, because they're quite straightforward questions that we can just put into the, the FAQs afterwards. Um, and uh, the poll has just popped back up. I think that might be Luby, thank you. If you haven't, if you joined us late and you didn't um, enter data on the poll, that would be really great if you could just let us know. There's just two questions, whether or not, which portfolio you're part of, or if you're not part of a portfolio and whether or not um, you've used the tools before. Richard, Lucas, I don't know if you want to add anything before we say goodbye. No, just thank you for all of those great questions. It's great to see so many people engaged. And um, yeah, those, those questions are definitely sensible things to ask. Um, so please do make use of the, the help desk and we'll continue to, to answer your questions. Yeah, thank you everyone. And if you, ever have a question I, I will be I, I'm looking at the help desk email every day so <laughs> that's that's my main responsibility so if you ever have any doubts or even really detailed questions just feel free to send anything my way and I'll I'll try and get it back to you great thanks both thank you very much everybody and um have a good rest of your afternoons bye